talking about how to manage the stress of transition. And so I think every veteran that I have ever spoken to has told me that transitioning was much more difficult than they had anticipated or it was difficult in ways that they had not forecasted. So I'm going to talk to you and explain a little bit of the why and then I'll mention some of the veteran resources that are available to help you um, deal with the stress. So someone explained this to me, I don't remember who, so if it was you, please feel free, to, feel free to take credit in the comments. But the idea is, is that the average person has 25 to 30 major milestones in their life. So if you think about age 18 to age 64, um, and we start to plot them out, what you'll see is something like this. You know, maybe someone graduates from college, maybe they um, get in their first car accident, maybe they get a pet, um, maybe they move to a new city to accept a job, a different job, maybe they um, have a loss of a family member. And what you're seeing, hopefully, is somewhat of a balanced S-curve. But what we see a lot of times with folks in the military is that um, you know, even myself, I was on active duty for 11 years. I think I had 15 moves. Um, some of those were self-inflicted, but you see very compressed S-curves. And what's important is the space between those S-curves is when your mind and your body and your overall adjustment happens to process, right? Um, the experiences that you've had. And so when you leave the military, we can already anticipate that you're going to have quite a few S-curves that are very compressed. So more than likely you're going to move, you're going to change industries, you're going to change jobs. If you have a family, this is going to cause change on your family that might mirror back to you. So some of the things that you can do, obviously, um, you, know, you train like you fight, you can prepare early, do all the resume review, the networking as soon as possible um, in your military career so that you do have those building blocks and you're not rushing um, on top of moving and changing jobs, doing a lot of the foundational skills. But the other thing is that you can think about your transition in three ways. You can think about it geography, function, and skill. You know, do you want to continue with the defense sector or change industries? Do you want to move to a location? And if you are moving to a location, do you have a support system there? Um, it could be someplace you've already been stationed, someplace that maybe your spouse has an affinity towards, or maybe someplace that you yourself lived in prior to the military, etc. And then, do you have the skills for this job? Is this a continuation of something that you did in the military that you already have familiarity with? Because if you're changing, your geography, your location, your skill, what you're doing is you're adding to the S-curve. So to think of your transition in that way. The other thing is that um, I think it can be incredibly valuable to uh, align and just find that sense of community um, in your next life and so that you can carry that through, whether that's an organization like Team Rubicon, Team Red, White, and Blue, um, I IAVA, Iraq Afghanistan Veteran Association, I think we've all probably read the Harvard Adult Relationship Study, the grant study, right, where they studied um, what makes people happy, what makes people successful, right, and it's strong relationships with other people. And um, you can kind of foster maybe artificially that sense of community that you had in the military through some of those organizations that I mentioned, and they can help you acclimate a little bit better. And then the third way is to recognize that um, stress is normal and there are resources, whether they're at the VA or uh, nonprofits like the Cullen Clinic, um, that you can go talk to somebody, right? You can talk through the stress that you're feeling and that you're not alone in doing so. So um, if you're not familiar with the Cohen Clinic, it is uh, a mental health uh, resource that I think is in 10 states right now, and they also offer access to uh, mental health through video chat, um, and they're growing, and it can be free or very low cost to military members. They're aligned with major universities like NYU, UPenn. So I'm gonna throw that in the comments. Um, and again, if this doesn't apply to you, more than likely you will meet a veteran who is having maybe a more difficult time than you are, and it's just good to know about the resources. So, thanks for listening.